Hi, my name is Bruce Stewart. I'm a technical service manager with FMC located out of Choctaw, Oklahoma. Well, today I'm out in the cornfield and was going to talk to you a little bit about western corn rootworm. Western corn rootworm is one of the most important, if not the most important, pest attacking corn and it has a long history of uh, causing uh, damage and economic loss to growers. Well over 150 years ago was it first sighted. Also, uh, annually we spend or lose about a, a billion dollars to this pest, so it's a very important uh, pest to corn growers around the U.S. and has been a challenge to control. And you know, if we think that we're going to control this pest with just one method or strategy, I think we're probably fooling ourselves, and that's really what I wanted to talk today uh, was about an integrated approach. An integrated approach with uh, managing this pest could be with crop rotation. However, many uh, growers really don't want to rotate or can't or does not have the ability to rotate to other crops, and so we oftentimes have corn on corn. Uh, biological control agents really uh, have not been effective in this uh, for this pest and really also not an option here as well. Really we have probably three uh, strategies that we can approach this pest with and we probably need to incorporate them in our program or at least think about it whenever we uh, try to manage this pest. One is genetics using BT traded corn uh, that has a BT trait uh, against uh, corn rootworm. Uh, larvae, uh, also uh, using soil insecticides, and then also we have uh, adult sprays, uh, going after the adult corn rootworm uh, adults and uh, trying to knock uh, back those adults so they don't lay eggs for the next year. Genetics are an important tool for managing corn rootworm, and the BT gene that is placed inside the plant to provide protection of the corn uh, roots is an important tool used by many growers around the U.S. Uh, the corn roots, when they're fed upon by the corn rootworm larvae, produce a toxic protein that uh, kills uh, the pest, the corn rootworm larvae, and causes mortality uh, to them. Uh, this technology has been out for oh, probably a couple decades now, and we're just now starting to see that uh, you know it's not fully protecting the plants like it once had, had done. Uh, so again, trying to focus on just one approach, probably not going to uh, be successful in long-term management of this pest. Another uh, control tactic or option or strategy that we can use is the use of soil insecticide uh, treatments that are placed in the furrow. Uh, oftentimes these can be liquid or granule products that are placed right down into the furrow as the uh, corn seed is planted. Uh, FMC has two different products that can be uh, effective here. Uh, one would be a Capture LFR insecticide, which contains bifenthrin. Uh, the other is uh, Ethos uh, XB insecticide fungicide, and it contains uh, bifenthrin as well, plus bacillus, uh, bacillus species. Uh, both of these products go out between the rate of 6.8 to 17 uh, fluid ounces per acre and uh, however we really know through research and uh, if you have high populations uh, we're probably going to need around that eight fluid ounce uh, per acre mark if, if not higher depending on your population level in those fields so again soil insecticide uh, treatments in the furrow are a very effective uh, uh, treatment option here that can uh, also be used along with uh, genetics Kind of finally, the uh, last kind of approach would be adult uh, sprays, going after the adult beetles. Sometimes we call those beetle bombs, uh, where we're making applications to the adult uh, beetles, the females uh, specifically. And what we're trying to do is knock down those beetle populations to where they don't lay eggs. And so where those, uh, that egg numbers are reduced for next year's crop where we don't have larvae hatching and feeding on, on those uh, roots the, the next year. So again, it's really not targeted uh, to, to help with the population this year, but it's for next year, trying to uh, knock those populations, uh, those larval populations down next year by targeting the adult females. Uh, sometimes uh, adult 
weave beetles do cause silk clipping, but that's usually not an issue. Uh, oftentimes we have uh, products that are used for adult sprays can be organophosphates or uh, pyrethroids. Another effective product for adult beetles is uh, Stuart EC insecticide. Stuart EC insecticide has been shown to be very effective in having uh, and also having long residual uh, control of this important pest. Stuart EC insecticide is a group 22 uh, insecticide, contains indoxicarb as the active ingredient. And it's very unique in the fact that indoxicarb needs to be primarily ingested for uh, activity to occur on the, on the pest. There is some dermal activity, but primarily uh, ingestion is how this product is going to be uh, work on this uh, important pest. There's kind of three factors I'd like to mention on uh, utilizing this uh, chemistry effectively. One is the proper timing. Uh, we need to make sure we don't put this product out too early or too late. Uh, oftentimes the general rule of thumb by most scout crop consultants is the fact that uh, they would pull the trigger on making this adult spray about three weeks after they see uh, the first beetle. Some are more specific uh, when we uh, in their timing, and that would be when we see adult females with about 10% uh, of those having eggs in them. So that's a, a more specific period, and it's really important not to put on the product too early or the fact that we uh, won't have enough residual to provide protection uh, to those females, or if we put it on too late, the females have already laid eggs, and uh, so that's something that we need to consider is this uh, uh, proper timing. Good coverage is essential. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this has to be ingested. So three to five gallons is really is what is recommended if we're uh, going aerially uh, with an aerial application. Uh, proper rate, uh, we're looking at somewhere between six to 10 fluid ounces if you have high intensity populations that 10 fluid ounce rate is probably going to be needed. If uh, your populations are lower, you know, that six fluid ounce may work. And then that eight fluid ounce is, is also a very effective uh, treatment. Uh, we're going to get somewhere between 10 to 21 days of uh, protection, kind of depending on the environmental conditions and your uh, pest population. Uh, just one piece of information, you know, the adult beetles oftentimes don't just die immediately after becoming exposed or ingesting steward. You may still see them around for a day or two, moving around, but their behavior, feeding, mating, egg laying is all affected pretty much immediately once they come in contact with the product. But oftentimes you may still see them moving around even a day or two after an application, especially if it's cool and cloudy uh, after that application. You know, there's some great attributes about Stuart EC insecticide. One is that it can control other pests, you know, if they're out there at the same time that you're making the Stuart application for the adult uh, beetles. Uh, you know, Western bean cutworm, corn earworm, European corn borer uh, can be mixed with uh, fungicides or miticides. And also it has a short uh, re-entry interval, about 12 hours. So if you're checking a lot of corn, in fields a lot, you know, it's just a good peace of mind knowing that you're not in a field that uh, you shouldn't be in uh, and it has a, a very short re-entry interval compared to some of the other products used for uh, beetle sprays. So just kind of summarize, you know, I, I feel like you're going to need an integrated approach against this important pest, whether it be genetics, uh, soil insecticides in the furrow, or adult sprays. I think they're all going to be important and, you know, maybe use uh, one or two of them in one year uh, to kind of help manage or bring down pest populations, or maybe use one approach one year, one approach the next, and so on, and try to integrate these approaches to control this important pest. Well, I wish you the best and hope you have the uh, highest yields that you can get, and uh, best of luck to you.